think you can beat me in soybeans? Forget about it. We do have two tropical storms or hurricanes coming in the Gulf. They get a lot of wind, a lot of rain, so who knows what's going to happen. You know, I'm a sixth generation farmer. Can I keep expanding? What can I do? What am I not doing right? I'm confirmed sixth generation farmer. It's fresh, pretty thin right now. It's just that time of year. It's not going to be hard to beat Weaver. He's not even in my realm of thoughts. Like, pick out the worst plant. That should be how Weaver's crap looks. Welcome back to the Atley Farm. We're getting ready to spray some R3 beans here. Getting some uh, Revitech delivered here to put on the beans. It's supposed to be 94 degrees here today. I don't like spraying the beans once it gets too hot. So we're going to see how much we can get done here this morning and uh, we'll have to come back tomorrow and keep going at her. Revitech is a brand new product from BASF. Tried some last year, seen some pretty good results. The way it protects the soybean plant and the long lasting effects of it. We're really excited for that. All right, let's go get the sprayer filled. We're back here at the shop farm here. Getting ready to spray some beans here at R3. The beans been handling the stress a lot better in the corn, but uh, these are some really good looking beans. So we want to do everything we can here to try to protect the yield that we have. At this point in time, we really need Mother Nature to help us with some water and get them filled out here. These really got off to a rough start uh, with the cold, wet weather we had. Uh, they end up making it through and uh, they, they look really good. I'm, I'm really pleased with them. We came in and stunted them to try to get extra branching from them and it worked again. I was a little nervous though. A lot of people was driving by these fields around here and they was asking me, what the heck did you just do? The weatherman said it was supposed to be 86, 88, and then 100% chance of rain. We got 90 and 92 with zero rain. So it really, really stunted these beans bad. It burned them for about almost two weeks straight. And they look great now. Uh, you never know this is the same field. It's getting too hot outside right now, so I think we're going to shut down the sprayer. really don't like spraying when it's this hot and humid out. So now we're going to go and walk some fields here and try to stage some more beans. For June 1st, planted beans. I did not get a chance to stun them because we've actually learned we lose yield the later it is in the season. Now we're uh, trying to focus more on just helping it along. These are the June 1st planted beans. So people think when we intercrop, the beans are just a waste. Well, it's not what we're after here. We're trying to attack the soybean yield also. I'm very, very happy with that. That's the biggest key is having that many nodules on it. We really want to nodulate hard and early. So our goal is to have that starting by V1. We're constantly still learning on soybeans. They're still a great mystery. So is corn. I mean, if you think you got it figured out by now, you're mistaken. There's always something to learn every single day. The best way to learn is being out here and not being afraid to try new things. I've always learned more from the failures I made than any amount of success. So if you want to learn, learn quick. Fail a few times. It'll, it'll make you figure it out fast. So as you can tell, we're getting into black dirt now. We're pretty flat, so I don't want to call that a hill back towards the truck, but there is a small incline. There's a huge soil change right there. So we go from your typical Ohio dirt down in Illinois land. This is kind of why we always plant on the same AB lines though. You're kind of seeing the reason why right here. It's just wrapping itself around all last year's corn fodder. 
Following the same route path the corn did. Is that a it's a good thing. I'm gonna get down deeper. You can see I found moisture. So see how dry the soil is, barely get a shovel in. But the bean roots are able to go in deep and find moisture and hold on to it. I would say normally I have zero chance of any June planted beans going over 100, but I'm not gonna give up hope on these beans yet. They definitely look good, but they're a mystery. I'll just be honest, you know, they're just, they'll lead you on and then leave you. <laughs> Golly, you can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> I'm here to be the next pod father. Corey owns a crop consulting company called Advanced Yield, and we've been working with Corey for two years now. Advanced Yield's a lot more catered to customer specific needs, not just everything fits all program. Corey is very competitive. He likes to look outside the box. If you're willing to go outside your comfort zone, there's different things that he'll suggest, but they'll work for you. I might say go for it. We're out here standing in the 30 inch Agrigold 3722 beans. We're seeing a lot of success. This was a new planter for us this year. Uh, what we contribute a lot of what we're doing is the Monty's liquid carbon. We came in early on and did with our pre-plant spraying with some sugar, boron, and zinc. So we've done 10 ounces of Eltima on this already this year. And then we followed back through with more Monty's liquid foliars on these beans. So, we finally got a shot of rain. We were aborting some pods before that, but now as we're looking down through, we're getting good clusters. You know, a lot of our success here at this operation is our teamwork. Uncle Tom's here and my father's here today. You know, Uncle Tom did a phenomenal job of making sure everything was sprayed. We've been checking them. I don't see much insect pressure yet, do you guys? Grasshopper occasionally, uh, that's about it. Yeah. One thing we are seeing, Mother, Mother Nature provided some moisture, and for a chance we have mud instead of dust under them, and that would probably be a, a major determining factor on these beans, because you look at the quality, you look at the size of them, where they are now, they are, have been managed unbelievably. We're breaking that glass ceiling, so I, I, I give a lot of credit to Chris and Monty's products, Tom, and his agronomic background, and we're starting to see a whole different ball game here in the production of beans. Hey. Hey, how we doing, Nate? Good, I'm finishing up Miller Farmland. All right, finish up Miller Farmland, then meet me over at the Huff Farm. All right. All right. Hey, doing, boss? Good, what are we working on? Nate does all the bean planting, him and Ed handle all the bean planting. Nate does all the North Farms, Ed does all the Southern ground. Well, we started putting together a 4840 John Deere and a 1780 11 row planter. Got that set up checked our seed placement, checked our row unit rod, came out and started the home farm, planted all of that in about two days, followed that up and brought the planters here, knocked this out in about two days, had some mild, mild breakdowns, but settled all that out, put carbon in furrow as well as some other nutrients, and uh, now we're just out here checking crops and cleaning up. Working for Weaver, you know, it's been a tremendous opportunity for me. He's, he demands nothing less than perfection, but perfection is what you got to have if you're going to make it in this business. You know, you got to control the controllables, as Uncle Tom says, and uh, he controls everything he can for a reason. Looking at some of these beans, you know, we've only had carbon on this field for two years. We applied 30 pounds of magma hume, and we're, we're getting out and we're looking. Well, one of the big things we noticed, Tom and I, because of the heat and the dryness, we aborted a lot of pods. So now we gotta come in, now we gotta re-strategize since we've got an inch and a half of rain and figure out what foliar treatments are we gonna do. Are we gonna do an insecticide? Are we gonna do fungicides? You know, these beans here, one of our management styles, they've already had Valtima on. We already have our base plan, but we're gonna make sure we keep expanding and adding to it. And in the next few years, this will be a 150 bushel bean field or a 300 bushel cornfield in our operation. I'm Chris Ray, 
vineyards and it's the last second plant double crop soybeans. We are just outside of Eastern Maryland along the Choptec River. We're, we are in the field today planting double crop soybeans behind wheat. They're about half a day ahead of me. So we got the straw baled up here and it's all stacked up and now we're going to get it planted and try to get it sprayed in the morning. I do a little bit of everything really, whatever needs to be done. I have my own separate farms as long as with my grandfather and Temple Beach have their own farms too. We kind of all work together. I help repair stuff on whatever needs to be ran at the time. Uh, jack of all trades and master of nothing. It's one of a kind being able to work with your family members because I feel like you can rely on them a lot more. You know, with your family members, if you really need something done, you can twist their arm a little bit more and you don't feel as bad. <laughs>
Today I think we're going to talk about fungicides. We're going to go to the field in a little bit and look at some beans and talk about the results we have seen and hope to see. I mean, yeah, 100 bushels plus is nice. 120 would be nice. But, I mean, these ought to make 80 or 90. Easy. They really don't have much in them. I mean, I've got plenty in them, but I don't. I hadn't gone overboard and, and dropped an, another $100 an acre in them. They're clean, thanks to Ingenia. <laughs> For the most part, pretty nice field. Now, is this field on single 30s? This, this is single 30s. Single 30s, okay. Did you get to single 30s by a process of elimination? Have you tried other row spacings? Yeah, you know, it used to be twin 38s. Twin 38s forever because I'm an old cotton farmer. Right. And uh, some days I regret changing to single 30s. <laughs> really? So do you feel like you was getting more yield out of twin row 38s or? I thought I was getting uh, more aggressive growth. As far as canopy closure? And canopy, canopy closure is key to you because of your weed pressure. Yeah, so the, yeah. So this is what I'd say is my normal production field. Uh, it's a 4.9 maturity, planted uh, late April. They look pretty good. I'm happy with them. We, uh, our fertility program has been some poultry litter. You know, they're rib cage high now but at harvest they'll be uh, close to belt buckle or, or waist high. Yield wise, do I think these will make 100 bushels plus? I hope so, but I kind of doubt it. They ought to be in the 80 to 90 bushel range. Uh, they've had a pretty good season. Put some foliar feed in with our fungicide application. Uh, this field just had one shot. With the Revitec, it lasts what I feel like longer than more traditional or standard fungicides. Probably a couple more irrigations over the next couple of weeks and hopefully this field will be ready for a nice harvest or nice rewards. This field used to be a really great cotton field. Always one of my better cotton fields. And it's made some excellent beans, but nothing just over the top and I don't know why. We'll go to another field and same variety, plant about the same time and kind of compare. So we're in our contest field. That's what everybody wants to talk about. So uh, here we are, really looking forward to it. It's, it is an intercrop field. Intercropping, we have to harvest the beans first. So these will be ready in, in three weeks to a month. And uh, the corn's just gonna have to wait. The management on this, it hadn't been that bad. You know, you talked about nitrogen. These beans got additional nitrogen and they still look good. And they didn't get lazy. They've got plenty of pods. I don't know how here there. There's soybeans raised with the corn in a corn system. So looking forward to seeing what it does, especially in a yield contest. Maybe I can take everyone else out. Started out with a corn dryer and finished with a corn dryer. This morning, this is a new dryer. He was new last year, but the corn was dry, so we didn't use it that much. So this year we actually had some higher moisture corn we put in there. So this is his first year we've really had to run it. And we had a few obstacles. It's a kind of a new design. So uh, we choked it up real good. So it took us three or four hours to get it cleaned out to where we could go ahead and run it out. We had a pretty good mess. There was, I don't know, 100, 150 bushels of corn on the ground, but it could have been worse. That, that's better than 15, 1600. The best news is once we got through looking with all the soybeans, we came back. My staff, who I really appreciate, had it all cleaned up and loaded and ready to try again and uh, pretty much went off without a hitch. So I appreciate everybody at Pod Fathers and uh, look forward to the next visit. Monty's, I got together with them. We've got a pop-up blend and there's some special stuff in it and I made it specifically for this. With Monty's, we have trusted advisors, and we get that relationship. Working with Temple on this field of beans, we've got a very good root development. I mean, that's awesome looking. Monty's carbon, I wouldn't farm if I couldn't use that. 
Hey guys, this is Matt Miles coming to you from McGee, Arkansas on the, on the new edition of the Podfather. We're shelling corn today and going to look at some, check out some of our soybeans that we're terminating the irrigation on. Uh, and also, we have a special guest today, so uh, y'all stay tuned to see, see who that is. What's this weed, Matt? Is this anything special or not really? Uh, it ain't like something kinda, that bothers in the field or nothing. No, it's some kind of hedge weed. Okay. So what's your main weed? Pigweed. Well, old old fashioned pigweed or more like water hemp though and what they'd call, you know. Well it's Palmer Amaranth. Yeah. yeah. Which what we call water hemp yeah. and we're getting it bad. Oh, it's yeah. terrible bad. Yeah. Here you go, Robo. Now Dan, this is our competition, okay? So I want you to look at this, and when we go down the road, I want you to look at those. Okay. I honestly think they're better uh -huh. than these are. I think these are 80 to 100 bushel beans, but they just don't have the laterals on them. What we do have in this plot is a bunch of four bean pots. They look like they're gonna be big, too. Yeah. That's where Rob says we're gonna make the yields up, the fact they're gonna be big. We already pulled two. Why don't you pull a third one right next to that? Let's count them, and then the next, uh, we'll just, Look at the plant. Yeah, you get a five, I want to see it. Speaking of diameter, girth, look at that. I know. <laughs> well, it's no, it should nice. be three. If you I know, normally, that's cool. You know, you three, three plants. See, they don't look very impressive, but they're stacked in there so thick. Yeah. Three of those plants may equal one and a half of a million. Like what I population. got at 80,000 or whatever, yeah. Is that what you try to plant 80? Well, you know, I used to, I've been coming down for the last several years, you know. Heck, we used to be, you know, one, 135, 140, or even a little more, and then I was, then I went to like 115. Last year went to 100, but I did some real low trials, right, with 50, yeah. 60, 70, 80, and the yields were pretty much dead even. On all of them? Yeah, so I thought, well, so this year, like more of a normal was more like 85-ish. Yeah. And they're branched way out, but you would think, okay, they're the branch more, you got a bigger stalk, which they do, but the wind catches all in branches and viney Breaks. branches too. And I thought they'd stand better. I don't really think so. The whole thing just, it's like a pine they're tree. They're better with lower population. No, they're not really, no, they're not. Yeah, if they all look like that, but you couldn't hardly cut those. I know. You know, yeah. that kind of soft. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to design us a new type of head, wouldn't it? We gotta count this sucker though too. This is gonna take a while. That's a plant itself. Yeah. Yeah, if all my plants looked like that, I'd be happy. Oh my god. Just like that branch. <laughs> Just like that branch, yeah. yeah. Revitech is a brand new product from BASF. We're really excited for that. Revitech is going to be able to help growers stretch yields more than they have in the past. The number one name of the game should be reducing stress. You reduce stress, you increase yield. I'm excited about Revitech. We use it on every acre. We're looking at upwards of 60 days control. It's going to take great farmers and just propel them so much further than we've ever been before.